Welcome to Mall Gran Turismo Sports Special Team. This time around, we're featuring what was on the screen there. The FIA Nations Cup event at Blue Moon Bay Speedway with Group 3 cars. AKA, this is pretty much a NASCAR race, or as close as this game will get to NASCARs. And if y'all watched my last video, you know how the penalties react to a normal race on a circuit course. This is an oval, and it's not exactly normal, too, because this is for points. This ain't just a daily race, this is a FIA race. I mean, in theory, those are supposed to be cleaner because they're the quote-unquote professional ones. But in reality, well, if y'all saw my last video, if not, I do recommend watching that one because it's kind of a prelude to this. But sum it up, I got screwed over to the point of I lost about two... 2,500 is driver rating points, and this is the more important one. I lost 26 sportsman separating points. So, AKA, I'm racing with not as good of a split as I realistically maybe should be in. That's not bragging, that's just facts. Y'all can watch my last video again and make your own opinion on that, but. I didn't seem like I did anything dirty that last race, and well, now I'm in a race that, well, it doesn't matter what it seems, it's gonna be dirty. There's really nothing that can be done with, it, with that, especially because this ain't as much the top of the top. I mean, nothing against these drivers, I'm sure they do as good as they can and all that, but... I'm not used to racing with any of these drivers. This is one race after I drop down. This is the first race after I did that. Granted, at this point, like I said, I don't really care about the driver and sportsman separating part of it. I just want to have a fun race. Let's see if this is a fun race. I don't know. I guarantee my sportsman separating is going to go down, so I'm just going to ignore that and have some fun. If I can. As of now, though, can't really complain. I'm in third. Qualifying's chaotic here. It's kind of like the NASCAR format. It's just a free for all. Everybody at it once and hope you get in a good draft line. Nobody really formed a draft line in this. I think that's relatively common. I got drafted about half a lap. I guess the top two got drafted for more than half a lap, so good for them. I'm already maybe in first, though, so why did Germany crack it? Uh, well, we saved it. That's pretty cotton-picking good, I guess. Can't really complain too much about that. We all saved it. It looks like we're all going good there, and it's looking like it's going to be relatively competitive. Oh, for Jiminy Cricket's sakes. I was going to say, it's looking like it's going to be a relatively competitive race for about the top four or so. But, well, after the top three of us saved a big wreck on lap one, a consequential... Pretty much just bump drafting to try to get everybody moving again, which is pretty much needed, or fourth place was probably going to get by, caused me in third to get a penalty. Bump drafting is needed on an oval. No more explanation needed than that. It's needed on an oval in the discussion. It's a penalty for both drivers. When you can't bump draft on an oval, your penalty system is broken. Well, whatever. It's early in the race, and at least second and third know this now. Me in third, whatever. I don't need to talk in the third person when I'm in second place. But now fourth place is dive bombing. See, that's, that's what should be a penalty. I'm pretty sure that was a penalty, too, because that driver dropped back. At least you're giving penalties when they're deserved. They're just giving so many cop-picking penalties when they're not deserved. It's still pretty annoying. So, I dropped down a position there, one, because I'm sort of kind of trying to delete the initial penalty, and two, because there's somewhat damage in this, too. As I said in the previous race, now it seems like there's more damage now is kind of sort of i mean i'm not out of the race or anything but my car is probably three or four miles an hour slower per lap now is that permanent i don't know still early in the race not the end of the world as long as i can stay in the draft but i need to delete the penalty too so that means i pretty much can't slow down at this point or else i lose the draft so yeah that Nissel penalty was stupid, and then that car dive bombing was stupid, and the game's screwing me over, other drivers are screwing me over. Typical Blue Moon Bay race. 
This should actually get where the fun begins though, because now it's an actual race between the top three. As long as I can figure out a way to delete the penalty, maybe it'll be a good three car race for a while. Maybe. We'll see folks, we'll see. As of now though, I still need to pretty much be perfect. Seems like my car might still have a little bit of damage. It does seem like it's deteriorating, but I don't think it's all the way gone. Maybe it's just the tires. It's kind of hard to tell. This is the first race I've done at Blue Moon Bay with tire wear online. I did the offline event. Uh, the... What, I can't remember which version of the... The parts that go to your completion percentage of the offline mode. I can't remember which version it was. But it's one of the ones that got a whole heck of a heap of a complaints because it's one of the hardest ones to win. And honestly, I kind of agree with that. I, usually I can get them on the first attempt. The only two that I didn't get on first attempt was that one, aka the one here offline. And the one at Nürburgring just because I'm terrible at Nürburgring. And I don't know why that driver just dropped back there. That seemed kind of odd. Not going to question that though. But I still can't really delete the penalty because now I'm going to need to run the draft line. Because we still need to catch first who's pretty much borderline out of there. I will give credit where credit is due. Even though qualifying it's kind of hard to learn stuff of how fast people truly are. Because draft lines are sort of random in a 10 minute span with... Drivers who are unfamiliar with each other. First is Dan Wright fast. I ain't gonna deny that. First is Dan Wright fast. First was kind of... Yeah, on the initial penalties there. I don't know how first didn't get a penalty when second and third did, but... Whatever. I mean, I ain't gonna slow down either if I'm the only one not giving a penalty. Just I've yet to be in that circumstance yet. <laughs> Where I'm the one not giving a penalty. I guess in theory the Volkswagen was that, but in reality, that was true, and really I did nothing wrong there. I mean, I guess if you're the bump draft error and the bump draft E, and in theory you kind of both gain time from that, I guess that's why the game thinks it's a penalty, even though you have to bump draft on an oval. Um, uh, yeah, if you just down and get die bombed, that shouldn't be a penalty for the person who gets die bombed. But anyway, I think I'm going to speed this up a bit, because now it's just get to the leader. We're getting there, though. I'll give th third place credit, too. Third is helpful. Drivers clean and will draft and all that. Good job there by third. So now we're up to first again. The tires are a bit worn. The penalty is not quite worn down. This is where I have to decide. Do I go ahead and try to pass? Because we're going to have to pit soon. And I prefer to get into pits in first. Because then I leave in first. And then maybe I can just straight up well leave. Because pit strategy might get some leeway there while I have a bit more of a lead in general because even though I am trying to delete a penalty that does actually mean I'm not deleting as much fuel why did first just randomly slow down there that was weird I think first might be saving fuel too because first figured out that I have a penalty again first doesn't know how much of a penalty I have but I think it's figured out I do have one so now we're just pedaling and saving fuel. This is going to get weird, isn't it? Because now I'm in the lead, so I can't exactly save fuel immediately because second's right behind me, and I think that guy knows this at this point. Again, I sort of have the upper hand because that doesn't know how much of a penalty I have, and really where it's only second, I'm probably at this point just going to leave it, so I might actually get the lead into the pits, but then I'll still have the penalty. And first, who's now in second, will now get to save fuel. So, is he going to go around? Uh, yeah. He puts me around, and that's still a penalty. That's just downright intolerable. That... I would I don't think that was Dan Wright maliciously dirty. That was just mistiming on bad tires. But the penalty part of that is just plain stupid. Again, if y'all can explain why I deserve a penalty when I was the one hidden to the wall there, please explain it to me. Why well, I don't even think first got a penalty from that. How that's my fault and only my fault is beyond me. 
Again, where that was lap I was going into pits anyway, that probably lost me all like three seconds, and with draft I can make that up. But it's getting to the point now of it's borderline almost impossible to win at this point. Everybody's going to have to behave in a draft at this point to have a chance. And I'll go ahead and speed this up through the pitch. That, that doesn't really need to be seen. It's his pit stop. But anyway, out of the pits, the leader's still got in a half because somehow the leader got no penalty from putting me into a wall. Again, I don't know dirty or not. It wasn't the cleanest move in the world, but it might have just been bad tires and misjudging stuff. I understand that. What I don't understand is the penalty. The cotton picking penalty. I almost said not cotton picking, but this is going on GT Planet, so I'd better not. <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway. Moving on, that's a Volkswagen and dive bomb before. Hopefully that was an early race mistake and that doesn't happen again. It's still a bit late breaking there. We need to try to focus at least to reel in the car in front there and then we just have a draft train and then we can kind of... We can kind of slow down a bit in general just so we don't hit each other, but we should probably go ahead and try to catch this car in front here so we can have a big draft terrain and not just like two or three cars. Because two or three cars, eventually somebody's going to get screwed over by a penalty and then it's going to be less cars and then I'm getting screwed over by that car now. I don't know what's up with that driver there. It's pretty obvious at this point damage plus penalties equals bad idea to dive bomb, but... That driver's persistently doing it over and over again. Yeah, I don't know. And you can't even race dirty anymore either to retaliate. It's pure randomness whether it's penalty or not when you race dirty. And I'm not going to risk it yet. If it comes down to near the end of the race and I'm still around that driver and that driver's still racing dirty, yeah, I'll probably go ahead and wreck him penalty or not. Again, I don't really care about the SR at this point. Again, I'd prefer it to be a fun race, but if I can just get away from that driver, it still might be. Actually, it legitimately will be, too, if we can have just a draft train to the front and make it dramatic and stuff, because we all still have to focus to not get in each other's ways to give each other stupid penalties. But actually, as I said before, the driver who's ahead there has worked good so far. I've generally been in the lead so far with us two drafting, so... Maybe I should get in the lead again? Yeah, maybe. I think that might be what that driver's saying there. They kind of go to the middle and then go to the top. I think that might be a sign for me to go around there. So, maybe we can draft up there if that Volkswagen quits acting stupid. Jiminy Cricket! You downright wrecked that other driver there. I mean, that other driver ain't out of the race or anything yet, but that was a pretty caught pick and hard hit. I'd much rather draft with the driver who's in second for a pretty long time there than draft with that Volkswagen who's been in fifth and dive bombing. But no, that wasn't really a dive bomb there, so maybe that driver is finally focusing in now that I'm the only one left up here. But yeah, the strategy shouldn't be wreck everyone till you get to the point of you ain't near anybody. It's be work with others and then get down to the end of the race and then let the chaos happen. Because at least if all the chaos happens at the end of the race, there's only so much time for penalties to accumulate. If you get penalties at the beginning of the race, it will slow you down for the entire race. And yeah, I think I'm just going to have to downright wreck that Volkswagen at some point. This is getting ridiculous. He's now messed us both up and doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon. Even though at this point, I really don't think that driver himself can catch the leader. And now my race is pretty much ruined. I don't think anyone's catching the leader at this point. The leader caught a break with not getting a penalty. I caught the wall because that Volkswagen not wanting to catch anyone. So yeah, I got caught up in a lot of stupidity there. And yeah, I don't even... I really see no point in trying anymore. At this point, I'm just going to race it like a Dinalist and Derby because that's how everyone else is racing there. Really? Y'all are both going to go three wide when my car's damaged and pretty cotton picking, obviously so? Really? That's how you're going to do that? I know you don't know how much penalty I have there, but it's pretty cotton picking, obvious at the very least that my car's damaged. So quit trying to race stupid and at least try to catch somebody there. Somebody in front actually slow down and at least let me slow down too. Jiminy Cricket, I, I just don't get it. 
I'm going to go ahead and pause here to just say that that last lap of events is just... This is why the penalty system just doesn't work at all. One race, you do everything you can to be clean, and then it still goes down. The next race, there's one driver being dirty, and you can't do anything. You just see your SR go down in front of your eyes, and you still get penalties, and you still can't do anything about it, or it's going to go down anymore. And then by that point, you're so far down by... You're so far down in the pack because you had to delete a penalty that somebody else gave you. You're around drivers who may not necessarily be dirty. They just don't really know how to deal with more cars because they haven't dealt with me yet. Like, I haven't been around these drivers yet. And so then my car is damaged and I have a penalty, so I try to delete the penalty and they don't even know what to do. And then, well, there was a reason I paused it at that point. Yeah. I have no chance of even finishing at like a top five at this point. Again, y'all can be your own judges, but I don't think any of that was my fault. Maybe I should have just slowed down and immediately served the penalties, but at that point I feel like I'd be even more of a road hazard, because then I would have to completely speed up again. I feel like it's better to be at 140 miles an hour for five seconds than to just slow down for like 30 seconds and then speed up again, because then you're going from like 180 to 80 to 180 again. I feel like a consistent speed works better with other drivers than a variating speed. Even if that consistent speed is consistently slower for longer. So that may have ended up screwing over any even more if I did the slow down and then speed up instead of just stay at a consistently somewhat slower speed. But either way, I can't tell if that was going to work or not because, well, I just didn't do it. But that puts me now in ninth. No penalty, but I am in ninth. And this is just a suggestion that I'm going to make here, too. Maybe. Just maybe. If you serve all of the penalties that you're given... That shouldn't hurt the SR. Again, I don't really care that much about the SR because it's kind of pointless to care because you're not in control of your own SR at this point anymore. But it's like in pretty much every situation ever. In most sports, if you get a penalty or a sanction or whatever and you serve the whatever it gives you and then it's back to not having anything... There's no more repercussions than that, usually. But in GT Sport, even after you serve all the penalties, whether you do or you don't serve the penalties, the SR is still down the same amount. No other system does this. Only GT Sport. They're supposed to be the real driving simulator, but that's just not how real driving works. In real life, I guess there's the marks on your license thing. If you get in a wreck, it hurts your insurance and all that. But this is also racing. I know it says driving. It's the real driving simulator. But I mean, for Jiminy Cricket's sakes, does this look like driving on a road or racing on a track? Y'all can be the judges there. This ain't supposed to be like driving in a on a street. This is racing cars. They said, make it to where racing cars is fun, because that's the point of racing all in all, is to have fun. That's the point of sports, to have fun. That's the point of video games, is to have fun. They said, make it to where it's Dan Ryan's a chore to even race. <sighs> At this point, though, the rest of the race should be quote-unquote fun, in the sense of now it's going to be a three-for-all, and now it's an expected demolition derby, because now everyone's probably going to be mad at everyone. Because I guarantee in that, where I was the one who spun out and still got a penalty, I got the worst of it because I spun out. But I guarantee at least those two or three cars around me during that moment got a penalty too. So now everybody's going to be driving angry. I say this and I'm in third right now, but I also have to pit. So I don't actually know where I'm going to work out with this. Maybe where I got wrecked so many times and had to do so many penalties, I'm actually going to come out okay because I was able to go longer than a lot of cars. 
But, I mean, we'll see. I still don't even think I can get a top five at this point. Maybe there's just so many other cards with penalties that I might be okay. But if penalties get to a certain point, as y'all saw in the last video I did, they just randomly start going up. So you can't really get them to a certain point, so you gotta have to immediately serve them. So in theory by now, everybody sorta of already served their penalties. But anyway, this is this now, and this is 12th now. How that works is beyond me. Even after getting wrecked, I was 9th. Now I'm in 12th. I know I wasn't in a draft line with anybody, but I mean, for Jiminy Cricket's sake, it's not like there's any draft lines left now anyway. I mean, this is actually a relatively good draft line. From what I can tell, though, from where the lap cars are ghost, you can't actually use the draft now. This is really about the only track where that's a negative, but still, this is this track. I ain't gonna say anything more, though, because lap cars are being ghost is a good thing. So now I just have to work my way up and salvage whatever I can, because there's no drafting left to do at this point. I really don't think I'm to the point of the drivers around me are fast enough to push up to the front anymore. Because, again, this is some different drivers, so I don't really know how they're gonna race. And I don't know who has a penalty in front of me. So I don't know how to move up, and I don't know who's gonna move down. So why would I even try anything at this point? What do I have to lose, though? So, eh. Does that cover all of the things? I think it does. Who cares, though? <laughs> But anyway, this is actually kind of fun for all of the stupidity I went through. It is sort of fun doing slingshot moves, because it's kind of like the, the old NASCAR games or one of the license tests with slingshot around the slower cars. This is pretty much that, but it's online, so it's that much scarier. <laughs> this is actually relatively fun. If I was doing this and these cars were lap cars, that would be pretty cop picking fun, especially because then they'd be ghosts. Now this is for real though, and this is for positions though, so... That actually wasn't that hard. Ah, I ain't gonna question it. Now I'm back to where I was before I pitted. The only thing that I can think is maybe those three cars, they're all kind of close to each other. Maybe they just had an agreement to draft each other at a lower speed or something to conserve fuel. But at this point, I mean, you got what you got. And at this point, I'm also just going to speed up to I press the wrong button. Because really, it, you got what you got, and you're going to be running... You're going to be running too empty at this point. If you have to pick, you messed up. But at this point, you don't want to have excess fuel either. So now I'm battling for eighth. Brilliant. I ain't necessarily saying I could have won this race. First was legitimately fast. First was arguably dirty, though, so... I might have been second, but I feel like that's a realistic finish. Second, third, fourth, that general region is uh, sort of for a minute of the three-car back pack trying to catch the leader. So maybe between second and fourth is legitimate and maybe an outside side of even first. Eighth is that right stupid and I ain't even there yet. So, yeah. The funnest part of the race was going around the cards that I should have never been with in the beginning, so... I figured going in this, this was going to be a demolition derby in the sense that the SR is going down, but I honestly figured that was going to hurt everybody to a point of it was going to, I'd still stay pretty much where I am. Nope, it probably did hurt everybody, but where I was the one that got spun out like twice. I am now going to finish an 8th or 7th or something, we'll see, I'm going to try my best. Actually not even 7th, well maybe, I'm going to cricket. I know I predicted the quote-unquote future there. This is supposed to be as is. I forgot. That, I thought that was turn three, but that wreck happened turn four. But whatever, seventh. <sighs> well, I was right on people in front of me had penalties. I was very, very, very right on that. But guess what? Where they didn't spin out, A, their tires were better, so they could maintain more speed. And B, they had the speed to begin with because, well, they didn't spin out. Again, y'all can make your own assumptions on that, but in my opinion, I couldn't have really done much differently there. 
About the only thing I could have done differently is Dan Wright just slow down immediately when I get a penalty and just hit the brakes. Immediately when I get a penalty. Try to gradually slow down so people can see what I'm doing and have time to react and stuff. I could have just slammed the brakes. Maybe that would have been a better idea. Slam the brakes when everybody else is going 180 miles an hour. In this circumstance, how bad this race went, I feel like that would have actually been the better solution. But actually, this was the best race I've ever ran. Literally, this was the single best race I've ever ran. My driver rating went up from 59,000, pretty much even, to 70,000. 11,000 point driver rating gain equals best race I've ever ran. It wasn't, it was far from the most boring race I've ever ran. It was far from the most anger inducing race I've ever ran. Overall, I would say it's more in the negative than the positive in terms of anger. But honestly, it turned out to be the happiest race I ever ran. I glitched the game out perfectly legally. This is something that's going to retain because it's their own error. This isn't even someone exploiting an error. This is completely by randomness. I did two races in a row that screwed up my sportsman separating. The first race is in the last video, and well, this race, I mean, y'all just saw it. This dropped my sportsman separating from a 73 to 59. Again, I attempted to be clean this race. I mean, I knew it was going to go down anyway, but I honestly didn't figure that much. But I'm glad it went down that much. Because I don't know the exact numbers yet, because I'm literally, there's like five or six people that this has happened to total. Because there's, that just rarely happens at this high of a level, meaning the SR point thing. I think it's if your SR goes below a 60 and your DR is still above 50,000. It resets your, your driver rating to 70,000. Yeah, don't know why, but you know what? For how much PD screwed me over in a negative way. I'm not even going to say all that much bad about them at this point. As long as that stays, like as long as I don't get back to an S sportsmanship rating and then that dro drops to where it would be normally. As long as that stays, you know what? I'm going to be happier at this point. <laughs> For all the craziness and chaos I've dealt with, this makes up for it. This puts me into, I think it's like the top 120 worldwide now in driver rating points. And I'm actually roughly in the top 120 worldwide in wins. So that finally puts me back to ish where I should be ish. There's a lot of variations there, but I mean, for those of y'all who've consistently watched my videos to see how many times I've lost points in ways I shouldn't have, I don't know what that total would add up to because it's impossible to tell because there's just way too many circumstances to add up correctly. But now my win rank matches my driver rating rank. Finally, after glitching out the game it does, but for how much the game's glitched in a way that's made me lose stuff this makes up for it so whatever finished seventh started third had the highest driver rating in the race lost 14 sportsman separating points but i gained 11,000 driver rating points so that is more worth a yeehaw than a lot of things have been in a long time. So, yeehaw! Now let's see what happens when I try to move up my sportsmanship rating. This will be fun, won't it? <laughs>